The picture you see on the screen before you is of Wake Forest students strolling along what everyone calls the Renolda Trail. The quarter mile path is the symbolic and literal connector of our two institutions. It's a nice reminder of just how linked our institutions are in our past, our present, and in our visions for the future. This morning, I will share several illustrations of what our affiliation has achieved and what we can envision together in the future. Wake Forest living out its commitment to pro-humanitate in the Renolda Historic District. When I arrived in Winston-Salem six years ago, when our affiliation was a mere four years old, what struck me was how many things seemed right about this union of two institutions with complementary missions. First, it meant that Renolda House was no longer an independent outpost of 19 acres on our campus land. It also meant that this parcel of property could be reunited with its sister properties, Renolda Gardens, Renolda Village. There is something so historically right about that union. We have a shared history inextricably connected to a prosperous, generous, and entrepreneurial family. And finally, for me personally, an individual who has built her career on education and learning in art museums. I would not be here today if our institutions were not linked. I have longed to have ready access to the resources of a talented faculty and inquisitive student body only a quarter of a mile away. My colleague, James Kristen Stewart, director of the Princeton University Art Museum, argues that the nation's best university museums have long been engaged in the practice of fostering critical thinking and visual literacy. In the way that great texts exist in perpetuity in the Z. Smith Reynolds Library for intellectual sustenance and rediscovery, so does the collection of American art at Renolda House exist to ignite the imagination about American culture, values, ideals, expression, religion, science, and literature. All of this should sound familiar to you. It mirrors the unique constellation of schools across our campus. When combined with the rigor of an academic environment, sustained analysis of a single painting can inspire a group of 1,200 first-year students to imagine what their future might be on our campus. And here you see an image of members of the class of 2014 looking at the Andes of Ecuador by Frederick Church. Together, we are achieving impact, not only with the bright minds who stroll Hearn Plaza on beautiful fall mornings like today, but also with residents of our, sta of our state who turn to us as beacons of arts and education, and with scholars and tourists around the country who have come to know Renolda as the Mecca for the best examples of American art. And in fact, Alan Simpson dropped by a month ago and just yesterday, Nikki Giovanni came by to visit the Bearden exhibition. I'm struck by just how deep and strong the roots of our affiliation go. Today, we celebrate a decade of affiliation. In an afternoon press conference held in the historic house in 2002, Renolda House President Barbara Babcock Millhouse and Wake Forest University President Thomas K. Hearn Jr. sat at the desk of R.J. Reynolds and announced a bold and visionary affiliation agreement. In so doing, the university affirmed its desire that, and I quote, the program of Renolda House be enlarged so that the potential of the two organizations working together may be fully realized. But our partnership goes back more than six decades when Wake Forest College decided, with the support and encouragement of the Reynolds and Babcock family members and the Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation, to relocate to Winston-Salem. It was a bold move, one that was backed by a bold vision from a bold family. And we all know of one of the university's next bold moves, integrating a southern campus 50 years ago this year. And I'll come back to this in a minute. So as Wake Forest evolved and flourished, so Renolda House transitioned from a private home to a museum where American art is at home, and the story of its development is a fascinating one. 
The painting by Frederick Church that we saw earlier was one of nine original works of art that were purchased by Barbara Babcock Millhouse in the mid-1960s. And those works launched the nucleus of a collection that today numbers 250 examples of the finest American art in the entire Southeast region. What distinguishes this extraordinary collection is the fact that it is nationally known and even internationally exhibited. There were two concerns that occupied me within my first day at Rinalda House. First, I wanted to tour every inch of the museum. And second, there was a loan request from the Guggenheim Museum sitting on my desk. It was a request for the museum's painting, Sierra Nevada by Albert Bierstadt for a show titled Art in the USA, 300 Years of Innovation. Professor of Art History David Lubin was participating in this exhibition by writing an essay in the catalog. And since David Lubin also served on the search committee that hired me as a director of Renold House, I thought I'd better pay attention to that loan request and address it. And in fact, our painting by Bierstadt ended up traveling to Beijing, Shanghai, St. Petersburg, and Bilbao as a result of that request. I made it my next priority to focus on the relationship between the museum and the university and had some of the best people to help me navigate my way across the campus. Debbie Rubin was my partner and the chair of the board of Renolda House at that time, and I quickly learned how the affiliation benefits the operations of the museum. While I'm grateful for the 12% of our operating budget that comes from the university, I'm equally indebted to the efficiencies of operation the affiliation provides. The museum's endowment is managed ably by Jim Dunn alongside the universities. Infrastructure resources are provided by HR and information systems, and remarkable collegial support is fostered among colleagues and sister offices on campus. In 2004, when the museum completed construction on the Mary and Charlie Babcock Wing, in which we now sit, Renolda House benefited from the expertise of university officials who ensured it was built on time and on budget. So it's fair to say that we wouldn't be sitting here today in this lovely auditorium without the support and spirit of collaboration we've enjoyed with Wake Forest. I would argue that the dreams of our respective institutions are overlapping with greater intention than ever. The family history and collections have inspired scholarship and creative expression among faculty across disciplines and professional schools. So let me give you a couple of quick examples. Michelle Gillespie's new book on RJ and Catherine. Professor Barry Main is again teaching his popular first year seminar at Renolda House. Students took the role of researcher and lecturer mentored by their professor Morna O'Neill to develop an exhibition called Domestic Bliss, Art at Home in Britain and America, 1780 to 1840. This past spring, students in a business and art class worked on a project that resulted in an active student advisory council for the museum. And the Divinity School has incorporated Renolda House and its collections as the inspiration for retreats for its faculty and board of visitors. And here's one I'm personally inspired by. Last spring, I had the pleasure of working with Dr. Sonia Crandall, Professor of Family and Community Medicine, to use the resources at Renolda House to support the students in her narrative medicine class, which is designed for fourth year students. Over the course of three class sessions at the museum, I facilitated students using the art collection and the landscape as they examine the narrative of themselves in the future as medical practitioners. We took them through guided interpretation of the art, meditative walks through the Rinalda Historic District, and helped them discover their own artistic and creative expression. They were envisioning their future as medical practitioners, but they were also learning to identify with one another as people outside the clinical setting. These are just a few of the many ways each year that we're increasing the number of students who just like our Provost Rogan Kirsch can point to their experiences at Renolda as formative in their time at Wake Forest.
This brings me back to the stunning exhibition of collages in the gallery next to us. As I said earlier, our university is celebrating the anniversary of integration. There is no better time for us to explore together themes that connect all of humanity. Using this exhibition, I can outline for you the varied types of really meaningful collaborations that happen each semester between us that benefit the campus community and the larger community. We are one portal through which the university can reach a larger audience. An academic symposium focused on global Homer, sponsored by the Humanities Institute and organized jointly between Rinalda House and Wake Forest faculty. In fact, this very room will be transformed for that event tomorrow. The Veterans Advocacy Law Organization, Valor as it's known on campus, will offer a workshop at Rinalda House in November on legal issues for veterans. The Division of Student Life has chosen one of our popular Epic Thursday After Hours public events as an awakening program for students. And we are even having an effect on residents' life. This fall, our staff developed a workshop for over 100 resident advisors to teach them how they can use art, both at Rinalda and in the Student Union Collection on campus, to help facilitate conversations with residents around conflict resolution and forming meaningful relationships. we today just a few years away from the centennial of this historic estate. Our values as a university are propelling us to look at the human condition of our students in a more holistic way. To ensure one, that they are intellectually challenged and are equipped to develop the independent and critical thinking skills necessary for navigating a constantly shifting world. Two, to ensure that they are emotionally and spiritually confident about their place in life. And three, to ensure their overall health and well-being, not only through mind, the soul, but also through the body. There is a parallel between our life today at Wake Forest and the life that Catherine Smith Reynolds and her family strived for 100 years ago. This connection to our history is the foundation for my vision for the future of this affiliation. This model partnership is worth investing in. I have a personal commitment to this partnership, to fulfilling our missions to serve humanity. I stand tall on behalf of Renold House and Wake Forest. I hope you will join me in continuing to build this model and advance Rinalda as one of the most distinctive and creative elements of our campus. <laughs>